kids are watching this, okay? Ugh. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. It's, it's grape juice. It's grape juice. I know a bad joke. What's your bad joke? I'm back. Welcome back, Akon. Just in time. So, uh, Dot Hacka said, explain your type is nine wing one. So, Enneagram is another personality typing system that is very similar, or not not sim not similar, but complementative to the Myers Briggs personality test. So, with the Myers Briggs personality test that I just explained, um, that is more of a framework of how you pro take in information and process information and make decisions, and it's it's more of a framework. Whereas Enneagram is uh, more of a spiritual type of personality typing system and it explains more about your drives your fears your motivations as an individual and so it gets pretty i, I like enneagram a lot because it gets pretty deep so a nine uh as far as the numbers go there are think of an enneagram i mean if you type in enneagram you will be able to see it but uh, i'll draw it for you Do i have a black marker i have a pen I'll try to make this as condensed and brief as possible, even though it's an entire way to categorize human nature, human personality. Oh shit. Okay, yeah, we'll just start off with the circle. So we got nine. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven and eight. Okay, so this is human nature. Let it be known for the record. I fear nothing except dying alone. Interesting. That's interesting. Hmm. Um, so there are nine different personality types, but all of these, all humans share all of this. It's just what your core is. That is your strongest, most driving motivations and fears. And so each of these, think of um, each of these types has a lens that they view the world through. And so um, each of these has strengths and each of these has weaknesses. But all together, it all kind of forms uh, just tra basic, you know, traits about human nature. So anyways, um, there are three, three sections that I will split off right now. This is just the basics. So that's a shitty heart. This is the, uh, the I'll, I'll draw a stomach, I guess. <laughs> That's a stomach. And this is a brain. Okay, so this, these are, this section is called the gut-based section. It, this is the thinking section or the, the brain section. And this over here is the heart section or the feelings uh, center. I guess these are centers of how these types relate to the world. So ones are perfectionists and they fear not being perfect. So often they will have very strong morals and values and many um, priests and preachers are ones, but, uh, and so they, they lead, they try to lead as good a life as possible. But when they get corrupt, they have a dark side. All of these personality types have their light sides and their dark sides and a whole spectrum in between. Um, so they will, you know, show just uh, like their negative attributes are being too dogmatic and too strict, um, too perfectionistic, that kind of thing. The eights are, where, what am I going through? Okay, one, let's start here. So two moves over into the heart section. And so twos are the givers of the Enneagram. Is, is this interesting? Do you guys want me to play the game or do you want me to continue explaining this? This is going to take a little longer than I thought. I'll drink water while you answer. Is anyone interested in this? I got 37 and 9 and 33 and 3. Okay, so you mix, you could be, yeah, I mean, either or, This these tests aren't perfect and they'll never be completely accurate. accurate. You vote continue? Okay, that's one vote. That's good enough for me. <laughs> I love this shit, so I will continue. All right, so, twos, the way they... So each of these types have a way that they need, they feel that they need to be in order to be loved and valued as a person. So ones, they need to be perfect. Uh, twos, they are the givers of the Enneagram. They feel in order to be loved, they have to give 
love and the test I have the link down here I'll, I'll show you guys it's below um, I have to go to my channel I don't want to see the real one because the numbers mess with my hair rah, 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 rah. okay I saw it anyway it's cool <laughs> okay because the numbers mess with my Oops, hair there you go rah. talking on my stream my stream stream all right one copy paste um don't do this on a cell phone because it might get uh, unless somebody did a cell phone yep that would make sense a lot of intjs and i actually most intjs and intps are fives so that totally makes sense nordic and with the wing six it kind of makes sense that you talked to us about ppd earlier and um they uh, sixes are very anxious types and so that would and suspicious types so that would make sense i used to date a core six and <laughs> Whew, things were crazy. So there it is. Um, it's a longer test and try to take it on your computer because sometimes people have told me they take it on their phone and the results don't show up. So I don't want you to waste a bunch of time. Um, but you know, you're welcome to take it if you want. So anyways, okay. Twos are the givers of the Enneagram. They like to do things for people and give to people um, a lot without, uh, well, so, so they feel so sometimes they overgive and uh, they, they can keep it to themselves and start to get really resentful to their loved ones because they feel they're putting in a lot of effort but they're not getting uh, as much love as they feel they deserve back. So this can kind of get into the territory of like people who uh, do things for others but when they're unhealthy they also expect things from the, the things you know that they give to people. So um, there's that. And, and they are in the heart center because that is how they relate to people. So Enneagram 3, um, this is a very interesting type. Joe, Joe is an Enneagram 3 and my best friend Joe is always in the chat. Uh, threes are achievers of the Enneagram. They feel that they need to be successful in order to be loved and valued as a human being. It's part of their identity to be successful. So threes will do a lot to get where they need to go in life. A healthy three has a lot of energy and is really good at making connections and impressing people and they're, they're very smart types so they have the the energy and the effort and the drive to get really far in life and um uh, but at the same time there's a dark side to threes so their way of relating to the world is um or, or interacting with people sometimes is to put on different images in order to to get the best out of a situation and sometimes that can everybody does that like everybody does all of these things <clears throat> it just depends on what your, your core is like i said so threes will take it to the extreme where they will actually um if they're unhealthy they will lose themselves and and not really know what they want or who who they are because their motivations come from getting other people's respect and appreciation and success and so yeah it's a uh, uh, jo Joe's a pretty healthy three, I would say. Now, um, we uh, typically when people are younger, they are they are unhealthier. They're figuring life out. Um, if you've been in a really low place in life before and you've done things that you you never thought you would do or you're really embarrassed about, that's probably why. Is because you're just a really unhealthy version of yourself. This is where personality disorders start showing in on types, like. Um, I'll, I'll explain later when I get to fives, for example, because um, Nordic and I were just talking about that in chat. So anyways, so threes, yeah, so um, uh, they also relate to people with the heart, but they, they cover it up with the way they want to succeed in life and that kind of thing. So great people, but they can also be really manipulative and terrible people too, but can't we all? So fours are the, what, what, are, you, the, um, what are they called? They're, they're the very... They're like the bleeding hearts of the Enneagram, like the um, starving artists. Fours are very emotionally intense, creative individuals, artists. Um, they are types that live and breathe and die for their art, and they uh, typically have a lot of problems connecting to like they have they can have very intense relationships because they are so intense with their emotions but they can also get manipulative in the sense um of this one's harder for me i used to date a four and uh very very 
intense kind of person. And so, yeah, they, they can go really far in life with their artistic abilities. But at the same time, they deal with a lot of struggles of shame, of feeling inadequate, of comparing themselves to others. Um, that is my second Enneagram. I'm a seven, four, nine. So those are my three uh, types, as they say, that you're, I can't remember. So you said dim. That's all I have is a phone. Okay. Yeah. Bookmark it and we'll see. So you like to call that my chameleon. Yeah. So threes are often compared to chameleons because they can switch into different situations. Taco says he's a four, five wing four. Okay, cool. I can, I can see that. Especially, yeah, if you're in INTJ, we, we shall see. So over to the fives now. Fives are really awesome. They're, they are the observers of the Enneagram and they are probably the most intelligent as far as book smarts go. Um, they can take a topic and drill down deep into it and know like like all of the ins and outs of something very complex is you know you can even go so far as to say like rocket science and, and all of this the super smart people of the past like you were just saying what was it um, uh, Albert Einstein and people like that were five fives probably a lot of Nobel Prize winners fives um, they are very, they're, they're private people, and that's why INTJs and INTPs are uh, very correlated with them, is because they are introverted, and they spend a lot of time in their minds, and studying with, by themselves and wanting to be alone. So it's hard for them to make connections with others. Um, an unhealthy five will, uh, they can get, Paranoid, schizotypal, um, do Darwin Awards count? Probably. There's probably a high incidence of fives and INTPJ, INTPs and INTJs in uh, Darwin. Wait, wait, what are Darwin Awards? Some kind of science award? But I know, yeah. All right, so anyways, um, so yeah, their unhealthiness can take the, can really get, it, they can get really introverted and really into their mind and, and get really paranoid and... Um, I mean, it's something I can't understand because I, I, I'm not very close to a, a five type at all. But I've had a lot of five friends and, um, and yeah, I see certain things and unhealthy fives. And they can also party too. I mean, fi fives, oh, this gets so complicated. I won't go into that. But, um, but a healthy five will be uh, very direct and bold and sure of himself and have this topic or these topics that he understands very well and he wants to pursue and research and develop and um, oftentimes they will work for companies or organizations as engineers as um, you know various computer and IT related things and uh, they, they like to be left alone but they, they also dislike authority a lot um, they definitely dislike authority. I, I was in charge of a five at one point because I kind of got promoted in our section and my friend who was an INTJ five, he fucking hated it and he would not listen to what I said at all. It was so terrible. But um, anyways, the excitement you have for this topic is interesting. I'm so excited. <laughs> I love that. Darwin Awards is an award given to stupidest deaths. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought Darwin is in like um, the science related Darwin. So maybe... Who knows? Probably not, actually. There's probably... I don't know. You never know. There could be all types in there. Like Star Wars. I love me some Star Wars. Yes, Taco could talk about Star Wars. All right, moving on from the fives. We have sixes who are the... Um, what are they called? The loyal skeptics of the Enneagram. They are very anxious types. Oh, so this is... So that was the heart center right here. This is the head center. And the head center... I'm in the head center. I'm a seven. Uh, we deal with anxiety more than most people. Um more than other types rather so fives have pretty high levels of anxiety and so do sixes um sixes are more want to connect more with people um but they're very they don't know who to trust they probably grew up in in a family or relationships that they didn't like or uh, sorry didn't really couldn't really trust they didn't know who who to trust or sometimes maybe the parent would be um, abusive or, or even just unreliable and so they grow up not knowing who to put their faith in but they want to find somebody to to um, lead them I guess and to find that rock for support so they can be very loyal but they can also be uh, really against an organization or the man or something so think of 
gangsters, kind of like as a stereotype for sixes. They're very loyal to their gang, but they're also very like anti, you know, the man, anti-police and all this stuff. And they will, they will die for loyalty of that kind of thing. So, um, I used to date a six and he was a very kind of paranoid, skeptical person. It wasn't really my thing. I did not appreciate it very much after a while. So we weren't really made for each other. Nordic, you say you're an unhealthy five. Interesting, interesting. Is it because of the um, certain traits? Did you, are you reading anything? Okay, so we're almost done. We're getting up to the eight. Um, so eight is part of the gut section now. So uh, the gut center is where you feel, it's more of an instinctual center. Um, eights are very instinctual people. So if you guys check out um, Bob Gaming, I've dropped that link a few times. He's an eight. I can absolutely tell he's an uh, ESTP eight. I knew it as soon as I saw it. They are very, they want to be very strong people and they don't like to look weak. They don't want to be taken advantage of and they want to um, be in control of them, their selves and their destiny. And so uh, eights often will, it, and they are strong people because they, they, they do typically feel very confident of themselves. Um, but uh, on the inside is a sensitivity that they're not willing to show other people. And so they, they have a hard time showing vulnerability to others, which equals they have a hard time connecting with others. And that's kind of the same thing for fives in a way. Is like fives don't necessarily need to, to, to feel... They hate authority, but they just want to do their own thing. Eights are more like... It, kind of like that too, but at the same time, they they take it to a, more of an extreme. So, um, did you skip seven? Oh, I did skip seven. <laughs> yes, so, sevens right here are the, um, the optimists of the Enneagram. We are usually very happy, optimistic, energetic. A lot of NFs will be this way, or ENT, ENTs and ENFs are typically going to be your sevens, um, extroverted, um, like we can look, sorry, I need a breath, sorry, I need some water, so we can look, um, introverted sometimes, like I can definitely look introverted when I'm being reserved and stuff, but typically we get our energy from being around a lot of people and doing really fun things, sevens need variety in life. Like, in order to be loved, we feel like we need to have options. The worst thing for a seven is to feel like they're restricted restricted in life and they don't have the means to do what they want in life or what they feel like they need to. But ultimately, deep down, sevens, especially unhealthy sevens, don't know what they really want or what's going to make them happy. So sevens often have a... Um, should I bring this over here? Hold on. Let's put some music on super low. I don't know why I didn't finish this out. Hangout screen, what's up? Let's play this. I know this is probably gonna be really loud right now. I'll bring this down below my voice. Okay, so, so yeah, so sevens, um, we are interested in many things and it, the, you can call us the uh, Renaissance people of the Enneagram. We're typically, I mean, you know, we're in the thinking center. I'm not calling myself smart or whatever, or as a plug, but um, typically sevens are very bright individuals. They can have an interest and pick something up really quickly, but at the same time, we usually don't apply ourselves to something. And it can take us till we're, till we're pretty old, um, or till we're older to realize what we want to do, wh where we want to place our, um, you know, our, our efforts. And so that's why when I say I spent a lot of time as a kid, um, like trying out different things but never actually succeeding in anything it's because of that um just really poor at applying myself and disciplining myself but i'm getting better i do want to make the streaming thing work and i think it fits my personality because i can be both introverted and extroverted and um so like i'm happy being in my room alone but i'm also like being around a lot of people and stuff excites me, gives me energy and that kind of thing. So anyways, unhealthy sevens are, can be manic. Um, they can be ridiculous and crazy and I've been there before and I would definitely consider myself a healthy seven now because I am applying myself. Um, I don't necessarily have, I guess I still struggle with the grass is greener syndrome because like here I am in Michigan, I want to move to California 
so bad, but, like, in essence, when I get there, is it really gonna make me happy? But I have a feeling, yeah, for sure. It's it's definitely, I know it's not gonna be 100%. Like, I've grown to where I know that it's gonna be a struggle in its own way, but at the same time, it's where I wanna be. So, anyways, that's seven. Moving on to the eight. Yeah, so eights don't like to show vulnerability. Um, they're actually very sensitive people on the inside, and, and they feel very strongly for things like, like, uh, animal cruelty for, you know, people treating the the vulnerable in a bad way. And so they'll stick up for, you know, and and try to take care of, like, old people and, and dogs. And they feel really strongly about that, but they don't have, like, the... But they, they're still not the most sensitive people. Like, they're very straightforward people. They will tell you like it is. They don't like people lying to them because they can't trust people. They will probably trust you until they give you a reason not to, and then they will shut you out. If you cross an eight, they will make sure they get revenge, and that you never cross them again. I cross an eight. Don't, don't cross an eight. In my <laughs> opinion, um, it's not great. It's not a good time. So, um, so for example, I used to uh, have relations with a, a Marine Corps sniper when I was in Hawaii, and. It was great, it was fantastic, it was magical, except he was a manipulative, he was unhealthy, I was unhealthy, we were unhealthy. Uh, he was an amazing individual, amazing, but he was not healthy, and uh, not healthy is, uh, will, will use others, but I mean, we all can be unhealthy and use others. Anyways, so the final one is nine. These are the peacekeepers of the Enneagram, and um, they, they are also in the instinctual subtype, but they repress their feelings. They don't like to feel angry. They don't like to be angry at others. Um, they are usually very peaceful people on the outside. They have a good sense of humor, um, but they they d they super dislike conflict, So, which is unhealthy for life. And all that repression of their negative feelings, kind of like sevens. Sevens um, repress their negative feelings, which can bottle up inside and later explode. Same thing with a nine, in a sense. Like, for me, I try to keep my mind, uh, unhealthy me tries to keep her mind busy doing a bunch of things to be distracted from the pain inside. Like, I like to have extroverted distractions, whereas nines just kind of block everything out in internally. Like, they suppress their instincts and their anger, whereas eights, eights go on that anger. And nines try to, like, have a weird relationship with their anger, too. Whatever. So, um, nines. And, and, yeah, nines get along with many types, but at the same time I think nines can kind of lose themselves because of all of the repression of negative feelings and they can it's also bad for relationships because if you're just repressing your anger all the time and not confronting anything then it can really uh, mess up relationships so a healthy nine will be more assertive and open to to conflict and saying what's on their mind so that is my spiel <laughs> that is the basics of the Enneagram Thank you for listening. This was uh, Enneagram brought to you by Catalyst Ride. <laughs> that was really fun. And th there's so much more. It goes so much more in depth, but we won't go there tonight. 101. So let me catch up with chat. You're an unhealthy five. Did you skip seven? I did. I def dislike authority a lot. Many different types dislike authority. And um, uh, I have problems getting bored of things easily. Yeah, many, many types do. So I got to go data seven. It, that's up to you, but seven's... Okay, I'm not saying anything about myself, but Joe said that, um, Joe has known me for a real long time. He's known me in my really unhealthy days, and also in my healthy days, and he used to notice that I was extremely dissatisfied. Like, anywhere I was, it wouldn't matter if I was at a party, if I was somewhere, I would, I would have an appearance of just being uh, restless and dissatisfied, and that it was uh, pervasive enough to the point where, you know, it just... It wasn't fun hanging out with me at times, especially when I was really like, oh, I like all this big and excitement, but once I'm at it, I'm dissatisfied. And I know that too. I used to be like that. Um, but now that I'm much healthier and I appreciate experiences for what they are, even if it's not exactly where I want to be, I'm much more satisfied with my daily life. And it shows, and he knows it too. And so, so find yourself a mature seven. Immature sevens are fucking flaky as fuck. Um, and I used to be too. I used to be very... Uh, narcissistic and super sensitive, um, you know, just, ugh. <laughs> yeah, you guys wouldn't like me if I was, if this was like five, seven years ago, so, um, eight sounds borderline. Uh, I would say sixes are more borderline because sixes, 
very reactive and um, um, like don't really know who to trust and once they trust somebody they gotta test them. Eights are kind of like that too but it's a much more solid co uh, confident kind of thing. They, I mean they could, some could be borderline, absolutely. Um, eights are more, what, what is their personality disorder geared towards? There's a website, hold on one second, I'll plug another um, <coughs> thing, hold out, Enneagram personality disorder portfolio psychology day does enneagram spectrum i like know all these what about this antisocial personality disorder is the eights thing so yeah this this one website it's pretty good um and then there's compa compatibility with different types, like sevens and fives. Usually, you know, there's pluses and minuses with those. Misidentification with other types. There's healthy levels um, on this one website ranging from one through nine. It's pretty cool. I really like it. And it does complement MBTI very well. So. Down to soul. Do, 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 do. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, cancel. No, not that one. Actually, I, I haven't fully looked over this. God, I hate plugging links that I haven't looked over. Histrionic. Yeah. Yeah, let's, uh, I'll just plug this. It, like, at first glance, it looks okay. Don't kill me if it's terrible. Um. And just to test your nine wing one. Okay, Docky, cool. Do you, I mean, it, when you read descriptions, how do you feel that it relates to you? And nine sounds like the old me. Oh, interesting, legit boss. What makes you, I mean, other types dislike conflict too. Like when I was younger, I hated conflict. Absolutely couldn't handle it because it was a negative emotion. I couldn't handle it. So yeah, have fun. <laughs> I'm gonna continue on with my game. Thank you guys. This is really fun for me, at least. <laughs> Carry on. Well, let's turn the music off. And 